It's called Eat Poo Love. And it's gonna be at the Fringe Festival and you'll be able to see it for just 10 bucks. It's a great, uh, great show. And it's uh, right around the corner, so I'm sure everybody's excited about the debut of Eat Poo Love. We've got the writer, Paul Clement, and producer, Dan McKay, both here. Good to have you here. Thanks very much. The show hasn't been performed yet. Is, am I correct in saying that? Right. So it is the big opening world on premiere, that's right. world premiere <laughs> on July the 6th, Friday night at the Fringe. Fantastic. So, uh, um, Paul, give me a little background on how this even came to be. It started with a personal story. Right. So uh, just over two years ago, I was diagnosed with uh, what turned out to be stage two colon cancer and um, uh, was, you know, cured with surgery. Uh, was spared all the, the nasty uh, other things to do with radiation and chemotherapy. Uh, so you didn't have chemo or radiation? That's correct. Oh, yeah. wow, nice. Yeah, yeah, very fortunate for sure, um, because the surgery was <laughs> difficult enough to be sure. Um, but over a year after that, um, I still just uh, had some uh, sort of unresolved feelings, and I started to write, and I wrote a blog, um, which did pretty well. And... Um, uh, at some point, uh, a little bit later on uh, in the fall last year, Dan uh, decided that it might make some good theater and contacted me at that point. And then that's how we sort of have come to today. Like so many things in life, when you can apply a little humor, it helps you get through it. Is that what you were finding? Oh, definitely. Um, you know, and, and we, we're certainly uh, using a lot of humor in the play, but um, there were many times that if, uh, if I wasn't laughing uh, going through some of the, the recovery and even the things leading up to the surgery, um, I just, you know, what else can you do? You have to laugh. Let's talk a little bit quickly about colon cancer because it's quite common, but uh, we're not getting enough uh, research going on it, are we? No, it's, uh, this is something that I've also gotten involved with some, uh, some fundraising for colon cancer as well. Um, it is the second leading uh, killer of the cancers in Canada and um, is, is really quite, uh, suffers from a lack of awareness in the public and from uh, funding into research and, and screening and that sort of thing. Um, so while we're not trying to accomplish uh, changing that with the play, if we can raise some awareness about it a little bit, um, you know, that'll be a great thing. But I think it's important for, for I think, people to understand that um, it, it is almost the most fatal cancer, but it's also very easy to detect early and cure. And that's what's the real shame of it, is when we're losing so many opportunities to catch it early and cure people um, and, and, you know, prevent these 9,000 deaths per year, or some of them anyway. So talking about it, laughing about it, brings it out into the open. And what was it, Dan, that made you decide you wanted to be a part of the creative force into <laughs> this making of the play? Well, I read through his blog, and at the time that he was going through it, I didn't really, he didn't really talk about it uh, a lot. And uh, so when I read it all and realizing it was in the past, uh, it, it really struck me that he'd been sort of keeping this to himself, or at least keeping it from me anyway. <laughs> um, we and talk. yeah, it was really, um, it just, it was, it was so full of, it's such a universal sort of theme. I mean, mo a lot, most people's lives are touched by cancer in some way. Um, but he had such a really creative way of looking at it, way of talking about it, and his way of coping with it. And it, it just had these theatrical elements. I thought this is something, this is another way. I mean, the way he started the blog to share his experience and to get people talking about it. And I thought theater, especially Fringe, is a great, great way of doing it. It's something new. Um, it's starting from the ground up and see what happens. But uh, when you applied to the Fringe, there was no script yet, right? So were you a little surprised when they said, okay, you're in, now what? Uh, no, well, that was, that was the good and the bad thing. It's, it's, Paul said, oh no, what do we do now? But no, I knew, uh, it, it's always a chance. There's, you apply to the lottery, and I forget what the chances are, but it's, it's, you know, it's a small chance, I think 15% chance or something of getting in. Uh, but that was months in advance, and we knew it was going to be a short show anyway. It's always the category we were in was 60 minutes, so I knew it would have to be a short show. Um, so yeah, it's it's ramping up the closer we get. Uh, we're we're all set and ready to go. It's just fine tuning it now. Um, but uh, that's sometimes that's what you have to do. You have to have a leap of faith. <laughs> that's right. And you had the blogs as the that as the basis. So it's not like you had nothing. No, no, that's right. And tell me about some of the other characters in the show. Me or you? Uh, <laughs> well, I think um, one of the great things about getting Dan and his brother Evan involved, and the three of us uh, co-wrote the script. Um, was they introduced a, a whole sort of artistic, really, um, I'm surprised to be saying that, to be honest, um, element to, uh, to, the, to, to the story. Um, and, you know, we, we've actually brought the tumor to life 
Um, we have a, a singing, dancing tumor. Um, you're not going to see that anywhere else in the fringe this year. Uh, I can guarantee you that. And um, Dan and I both uh, have the same profession. We're both piano tuners, and so we've we've sort of woven that into the narrative as well. And and we do actually have some, a little bit of depth to the story where we're trying to make it work. Uh, it's it's a lot of fun. It's very funny, but we're trying to make it work artistically as well, and on and on a few levels. And uh, I guess whether we succeed remains to be seen. <laughs> What has been some early feedback you've been getting from people who have seen it, witnessed the rehearsals, what have you? Everyone seems to love the idea as soon as well, the, the title really grabs people and then we talk about it. It's amazing um, people that uh, when you hand the card out, they really, they're interested right away. They want to know about it because as Paul said, it, it does affect more people than you realize. And as soon as they say, you're, you're putting that on stage. They're hungry for information, don't <laughs> That's you right, think? Yeah, They're exactly. actually hungry for a reason to talk about that stuff. That's right. And when I first talked to Paul about this, I said, this can't be a sort of lecture. I don't want to get up there and, and you know, talk about it like it's a sermon. And this has to be entertaining, first and foremost. And that's what his blog was. It was very heartfelt, but also really funny as well. <laughs> and that's... that's <laughs> Is that, is that the guy playing uh, you? That is that is me. That's oh, that's you. <laughs> it's yeah. me playing Paul. That's the idea. Yeah, that was... That's uh, hilarious. Getting for, to know Dan. <laughs> that's right. right. Yeah. Well, this is where Paul has you know spent a lot of time during the... Uh, <laughs> Who came up with the name? Um, I did. Uh, just just popped into my head one day out of thin air. I don't know. Maybe I had seen the movie recently before that. Uh, but uh, love. Yes, yeah. So it just popped into my head and everyone liked it. It's uh, July 6th is the premiere. You can go on to... Uh, I guess the Fringe website to get more information. Also, eatpoolove.com has all the info, right, on Showtimes. And get your tickets. They're only 10 bucks. Uh, fringetoronto.com, you can get those. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Good luck. Thanks for having Thank you. Very much. And good luck with uh, your future health. You Thank look you so great. much. Thank you. When we come back, Glenn's in the kitchen cooking with Marianne Amadeo.